Okay, here's something a little different. I am doing a special edition of the Art Music Technology Podcast, and this is all related to something that's new that's come down the pike. Uh, it's a new conference. It's called Synthplex. It's being held in Burbank, California. And um, I had a chance to talk to Michael Lehman Boddicker about Synthplex. He's one of the people who's putting this together, and he is so excited about it, and quite frankly, I've gotten to be pretty excited about it too. I'm going to be heading out there. It's in about a week. I thought that we should have a chat about it. Now, Michael and I had a long, long rambling conversation about this. He is, again, so excited about it. But um, I ended up editing it down, tightening it up, just so that it stays really focused. If you're interested at all, go and take a look at synthplex.com to find a list of all of the presenters all of the people that will be performing and all of the manufacturers that will be showing their wares there. Um, With that, I will be quiet and let's go talk to Michael. Okay, this morning I get an opportunity to spend a little time with somebody who's kind of a long-term hero from afar. Uh, His name's Michael Lehman Boddicker and he has an incredible life story. Uh, He's done so many amazing things over the course of his career. With no further ado, uh, I'd like to say hi to Michael. Hey, Michael, how are you? Great, Darwin. How are you this morning? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. Uh, I know, especially right now, you're really busy because you got something really hot uh, hot on the griddle right now, right? That's right. This flex is just huge. I mean, it's it's the amount of activity surrounding the amount of people wanting to participate, wanting to perform, the amount of people wanting to give seminars. It's, uh, it's incredible. There's 45 uh, people doing seminars and it's over 40 people doing performances. Plus, we're now up to about 85 vendors that are going to be there. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it's, it's interesting yeah. because it sounds like it sounds like kind of a mashup of like AES or NAM plus super booth plus a modular on the spot kind of a thing. It, you've got all kinds of stuff jammed in all all into one great big conference, right? That's right, Darwin. Uh, the concept was to look at super booth, see see the success and the people flying over from here over to super booth and looking at Moog Fest and looking at TED Talks and going, okay, let's do this all at once. We've expanded it to where we have four auditoriums and we will be staggering these in a way and grouping them in a way where, you know, say somebody who's really interested in sound design can come and watch a whole bunch of people, not have all the sound design people speaking at the same time. (laughs) Robbie Stambler, who is now working with J.J. Abrams on Star Wars Episode Nine, and he's doing all the sound effects on Eurorack. And I had no idea that J.J. Abrams was such a, a Eurorack freak. And Robbie <laughs> tells me that J.J. is calling up every day and going, I just found a new module, and we're going to be able to do this with it. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that excites me the most is Cindy Reichel and Tom Butcher are putting on uh, Noisy Kids. Noisy Kids is going to be where we have 55 kids at 25 stations set up, and kids can come in, and they'll be able to put their hands on stuff and get familiar with synthesizers where they might not have been able to before. It's neat. How, How long have you been working on putting this together? I met Mike Learmuth back in... January of 2018 at the NAM show. And he had this idea. And I went, wow, Mike, this, I did one of these in 80, 82, and 84 for Neris, the Grammy Awards. People. Right. Mike's idea was, oh, I want to have a music festival involved in as well as this. And I went, gosh, that sounds like a lot of work. But <laughs> by, May, <laughs> by May, we had set up a new corporation, Synthplex LLC. And uh, we hit the ground running and we started like trying in June, getting everybody on board. People like Spectrasonics believed in this right from the beginning. Eric Persing over there bought a huge booth in the local music stores like Perfect Circuit and Analog Haven bought booths. 
And then it just started rolling. We were incredibly blessed right from the beginning with people showing a lot of interest. And then people started coming out of the woodwork to want to give performances. I mean, we have over 40, 40 uh, people that are performing. Um, one of the things you mentioned was you were going to have these stations where kids were going to be able to come and play. And I, I compare that to like the NAM show where no one under 16 is even allowed in the door. Right. Right. It's it's such a different perspective that you're bringing to the table here. Uh, well, Darwin, we wanted to have it be all inclusive. It's not business to business. Uh, Nam is B to B, and I love Nam. I'm 66 years old, and I've been going to Nam. I've been going to Nam shows for 67 years. My mom <laughs> carried carried me on the floor of a Nam show when she was pregnant. My parents had a music store. We always went to Nam shows. It was always a major part of my life. I love Nam. I participate in the Museum of Making Music down in Carlsbad. I donate instruments to them. I do, you know, seminars as much as I can at the Nam show. It always interferes with my ability to see because the Nam show is so big, you can't see everything. Right. And if you want to just see electronic music stuff, it's all so spread out that you spend, you know, the majority of your day walking. Walking back exercise. and forth, right, yeah. <laughs> it's a great exercise, but, you know, the thing that's going to happen at Synthplex is we are uh, bringing in the kids from Arts Magnets, and they are going to be able to have this kids uh, by noise. We've already got Michelle Moe doing Dr. Bob Sound School next year in 2020. This year we have kids by noise flying down from Seattle. People are donating all kinds of synthesizers in stations with speakers, with headphones. Children will be able to sit there with, uh, I call them docents, where we're bringing in teachers from the universities and the colleges that are interested in, in uh, childhood music education, and they're going to be able to help these kids find their way around a synthesizer so they have a pleasant experience and they get what is possible for them. All the different things that you can create, the, the palette is so wide open for them. And then we have high school kids from all the art magnets uh, around Los Angeles that are coming in to do essentially the same experience, but those guys will appreciate, you know, uh, Dr. Annie Bosler showing them how to enhance their audition experiences, how to get better when they perform on stage. And one of the nice things about these kids when they walk in the door UVI and Rob Pappen have all donated, they've given to every attendee with a ticket who walks in the door, they get about $200 worth of synthesizer plugins. So these kids who come in are going to essentially have now a synthesizer studio on their laptop that they will be able to go away and apply this excitement at home and start creating. This is the electronic music manufacturers going directly to the people who use the material, who use the synthesizers. Those manufacturers are going to be dealing directly with those people. The city of Burbank has given us a musical swap meet license so that we can have uh, the ability to sell direct to the consumers on the spot. So oh, cool. uh, to me, this is... This is kind of what you see spread out around Los Angeles in a, in a year's time. If you flew to Germany, if you flew to the East Coast, uh, what was spread out over a year of a lot of traveling, we're trying to put it all in one place and uh, help people really broaden their horizons. Well, one of the things it sounds like, too, so you mentioned already that it's in Burbank. So can help people understand a little bit what the facilities are, because you're going to be running these kind of like constant live performances it sounds like but also you're going to have exhibitions you're going to have speakers is this like held on a on a campus or is it held in a where what kind of a place is it well, it's a very unique facility and we thought about all the different places we could do it uh the beautiful thing is that it's right at the burbank airport for people who are flying in we have, you know, like i said we have people from germany we have people from the east coast and the midwest uh, flying in. I mean, it's right by uh, Interstate 5. It's the Marriott Hotel at the Burbank Airport, and they have a big, beautiful convention center. It has a huge area in the center, like a typical convention center, like the Anaheim Convention Center, big open room in the middle. And uh, then that's surrounded 
by a beautiful enclosed sunlit hallway. It has uh, parlor rooms and meeting rooms. I think we have 15 parlor room and meeting rooms as well that are all attached to a big, beautiful courtyard. And then they have four individual spaces or one large space. What we're doing, we're, we're doing from eight, nine o'clock in the morning. I, I have events at 8 a.m. that are for, for people who want to get their day started correctly. At nine o'clock, the vendors start. And the vendors run from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock. During that same period, the seminars are going. And then at 5 o'clock, the music starts in earnest from 5 o'clock to midnight. From 5 to 7, there's what we call the courtyard kind of performances in quad. It's an honest-to-goodness music festival. We had it set up outside in a tent and we had it set outside in a courtyard because we did a 10-year study and we saw that it was going to be 70 degrees. <laughs> well, as, as you know now, Los Angeles is experiencing the coldest winter <laughs> in recorded history. Right. And because, it, because it's the Marriott and it's so big, we have the ability to move both the tent and the outside courtyard inside. And it's going to be, instead of being 49 degrees, which it is now in the evenings here, it may get up to where it's in the 70s during the day. So at night, when the the wind and the rain and whatever else with this polar (laughs) vortex, what we're going to have is uh, the music festival inside in two different locations. Every act is staggered by an hour on the stage and then the stages are staggered by a half hour. So you want to see Kitty Spit for a half hour and then go over and see uh, Roll Ryan in the other venue for a half hour and switch back and forth or however, you'll, you will never possibly get bored. It's going to be kind of like the best part of Coachella without all the dust <laughs> and the, the wind and the sandstorm. The, no right. sandstorm like Coachella. It's going to be a great musical experience for people. It sounds like it by being in Burbank, it kind of strikes me that it hits at the heart of something that your background points to, you know, I'm not going to get into your background. Normally, it's something I do in my podcast, but I think people can go and see all the millions of things you did. And you're you're so deeply embedded into the film composition world. It seems to me like locating it here kind of puts you in a position where you can draw on all these amazing film composers that are going to be nearby and all of the industry that is uh, that exists to support them as well. It's really terrific. You know, people like the Hans Zimmers and the Junkie XL, you know they're going to be there. They are attending. They're going to be there seeing the Moog 1. Where have you been able to really see it before? Get your hands on you know, it, yeah. it, you know, it was in pieces when we were at Gear Fest last year. It was, it was like a breadboard and a naked mm-hmm. keyboard. And this year they're actually showing it and delivering it. I believe there are six world premieres of instruments that weren't shown at a NAMM show or anywhere else before. Well, that's that sounds pretty exciting. Well, the other thing I would say is that uh, when you talk about a number of these people, you know, whether it's Daniel Fisher, or Colin Russell, or Russell Brewer, or or Rachel Stilwell, I mean, all of these people are they're not stars in the normal sense of the word, but they're kind of stars for the people that are engaged with the musical world, right? It's really a, a, an amazing collection of people, but also a very diverse set. So it's not just focused on film composers. It's this broad broad range of people and broad range of backgrounds. How, how hard was it to pull these people together? Getting them involved was no problem at all. In fact, we've had to turn away people that want to perform. We've had to turn away people that want uh, for this year. Well, you know, we'll, we'll have them on next year. But, you know, we had more people wanting to do seminars. Just say I go to an SCL board meeting where I sit with Russell Brower. You know, mm-hmm. and again, you talked about that. You know, they might not be stars. When, when I look at the game industry, <laughs> Right? He's a star. And yeah. the bil- billions, the billions of dollars of games that are sold. And you look at somebody like Russell Brower 
when he was at Blizzard for 25 years, a great part of that 25 years, they were grossing a billion dollars, over a billion dollars in game sales. And the person who's driving the music and making it fun behind that, using large orchestras, and he had a bank of 10 synthesizer composers on site doing this stuff. And Russell, you know, you look at, you know, top, top grossing, you look at, you know, uh, John Powell and five, six billion dollars. You look at Hans Zimmer and twenty nine billion dollars worth of gross. And you look at uh, Russell Brower and he's right up there. The billions of dollars are reflective of the millions and millions of people that have been reached by that music. So when I approached him, he was like, yes, yes, I would love to. People have been waiting for this venue, for this event to happen on the West Coast. You know, we, like you said, we have the NAM show, but that's business to business. There's nothing been like this where people, the users, the you know, uh, enjoyers, the fans, the creators, the manufacturers, the educators can all come together in one spot and all be together sharing, giving, in enlarging. Uh, there's nothing like it before, and uh, we intend to have these every year. It's going to be a, a terrific event. Well, it sounds amazing, and I think for anybody who's who's interested, uh, it's March 20th through 31st of 2019. Uh, you can learn a lot more by going to Synthplex, that's S-Y-N-T-H-P-L-E-X dot com, and I like the uh, the header on the page. It says hard plus soft plus modular plus DJ plus pedals and more. It sounds like if you're into making music, you're going to find something that's going to be worth taking a peek at here, right? Oh, e- even the acoustic instrumentalists who uh, use pedals. None of them are going to be know, listening to me. So, <laughs> oh, I, I think you'd be surprised. I think you'd be surprised how broad your audience is. You know, they're all interested in mashing these sounds up. They're all interested in different controllers. And there's going to be something there for everybody who makes a noise on an instrument. Well, Michael, I want to thank you so much for, again, taking... I know this is a super busy time for you, but I'm really glad we got to go into deep dive on Synthplex, and and I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Oh, Darwin, absolutely my pleasure. And, uh, again, the event is at the weekend of... March 28, 29, 30, 31 of this year at the Marriott Convention Center at the Burbank Airport. That's 2500 North Hollywood Way in Burbank, California. You can buy tickets at the door. You get a better price if you buy them ahead of time. Uh, And and again, if you're in a professional kind of group like ASCAP, BMI, SCL, Women's Film Alliance, all of those have special discounts. All you uh, college students have special discounts. All you high school students have special discounts. If you go to the website, you'll see that's there. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, and I am going to let you get back to business, all right? Thank you so much, Darwin. It's right. really a pleasure talking with you, and I am so grateful to have an opportunity. Are you flying out? for? Yeah, I'm planning to, yes, absolutely. Oh, you bet. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'd love to spend some time with you there. And uh, God bless you, man. All right. Have a great one. You too. Thank you. So I'll bet you can hear the enthusiasm in his voice. Uh, it's palpable when you talk to him. Fact of the matter is, if you've got the time, if you're in the mood for it, if you're in the LA area, or if you're up for a little bit of a trip, Uh, Burbank Airport is right there. I'll be there for the whole period. I hope to get a chance to see you. If you happen to be coming out there and you want to meet up, just shoot me a line. ddg at cycling74.com or darwin.gross at gmail.com or ddg at 20objects.com. Any of them will get to me. With that, enjoy the upcoming weekend and I will have another podcast out on a regular schedule. Talk to you soon.